I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing. I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. Working man is Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Working Class Holes Podcast. I'm your host, Ed McGowan, here in the break room with my co-host, Josh Accardo. Eddie. What's up, buddy? Fresh back from Houston, Texas. <laughs> I got a little sunburn. Jesus. <laughs> We got so lucky because there's like a tornado right now happening. Oh, shit. As we record this. Oh, shit. Yeah, we would have been fucked if it was this week. Anyways, uh, we got a really special guest. Not only is he an off-Broadway actor, but he's also a roast battle champion. Help me welcome Derek Humphrey to the show. Derek, what is your worst day job? Uh, You know, I I, I honestly had a uh, a really hard time thinking about this because I don't know that I've ever had like a the worst job so much as i was like the worst employee <laughs> like um like <laughs> such a running theme on this show with us <laughs> is it i kind of figure i think comedians it's really i feel like the jobs we always talk about are the ones that are in the kind of the beginning of falling in love with comedy and then you're just kind of worthless like once you discover comedy i remember every job i had i was just kind of worthless at it <laughs> yeah yeah well i was worthless a lot as a kid so like <laughs> Um, like some of my first jobs, I was like, I- I'm not one of these um, uh, younger people who are like, who thinks that the world owes them something. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think you should have to work for a living and, um, you know, labor should cost something, you know, like there's an equity that kind of goes back and forth. Having said that, like I've just been, a, I was a real piece of shit as like a teenager and like a young, I would always skip work to go. You know, I worked at Kmart, which was a shitty job. You know, yeah. like I worked at Kmart when I was like 16, 17. I remember I just didn't go in one day because I was trying to hook up with a chick. Amen. You know what yeah, I mean? There you go. Hands are tied. Yeah. <laughs> I got fired for it. And then, uh, uh, and then, but you know what? It, touching on that, the worst job that I really ever had was one that I really kind of liked, and I used to um, used to be like middle management at a luxury hotel. That's Ooh. where it's at. Middle management, Ooh. all the perks, a little bit of power, but you don't ever your head doesn't get chopped for something severe. Uh, well, I, I mean, like yeah, if yeah. you did it, yeah. But like if something <laughs> happened, there's a guy above you who would take the hit if it was an overall business thing, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. If it's an overall business thing, for sure. And I, I, I weathered it through like the um, the financial crash of the late 2000s. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, but the thing that actually made it the worst job was that um, it was in South Carolina, uh-huh. right to work state, which is what's that mean? It means that like. They can fire you at any point in time. An employer doesn't have to give you benefits, um, oh, as far as I recall. Okay. You know, benefits were an incentive, you know, for people and things like that. Like, uh, you know, to, to pick a job to do. Um, and but, um, like, you know, like I as an uh, as a manager could come along and be like, "Hey, Steve, I don't like the way you look today. You're fucking fired." Oh, you know, so you I can, can swear on this. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, not really, because I mean. If it's erroneous, somebody could bring like a real legal suit against you or whatever. But for the most part, and, yeah, yeah, for the most part, yeah, you could really, you could really fire somebody. How do you get that job after being a Kmart? It sounds like you're not. <laughs> it's, like, it's just like your resume was like the the most. Yeah, I got fired from Kmart for trying to get sniz, and then they're like, you know what? We could use you in the luxury well, hotel someone industry. Someone with your Derek, someone with your bright ideas belongs here. Yeah, <laughs> customer well, service. Yeah, from. So the trajectory goes. My first job I got when I was actually fifteen. I think minimum wage was like three seventy five mm-hmm. an hour. Oh. TCBY. Remember the country's yeah, the yogurt. best yogurt? Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. TCBY. Which all the guys I played football with are like, "Oh, you work with a bunch of girls. You must be a fag." And I'm like, "No, you dumbass. Hey. I'm working with girls." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had like I'm a not co- I had like choreographed a- dancing. I'm making yogurt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. And I had a college age woman like give me pointers on like how to like smooth talk a woman and oh. take off a bra and stuff like that. And it's like, yeah, you guys are lame. Yeah, you guys are idiots. Yeah, you wow. guys are lame for working at the steel mill. <laughs> and um, <laughs> But like TCBY then I left to go work at Kmart. And I worked there until I got fired. And then I worked at Bob Evans. This is all oh. in Ohio. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Bob Evans, delicious food. Uh, <laughs> we, oh, we, yeah, we, 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 we got a we, Bob we, Evans clip. You're like hitting, you're touching on all the hits right now. Oh, yeah. Kmart, Bob. I mean, Nick Callis worked at okay, Kmart. Oh, did he, right? Okay. That seems weird that he would. He, he worked in the dock. 
<laughs> he didn't even work like front of house for Kmart. Oh, wow, he was no docking kidding. shit. He was probably too handsome for front of house <laughs> for <laughs> Kmart. They're yeah, like, we need yeah, the we, humanoids. You're, you're throwing it off here. Yeah, 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 we need our we need our our customers to feel like they belong. <laughs> I like how Derek's saying that. At, meanwhile, he's like front of the house. He's the face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I was at a cashier's. Yeah. <laughs> I hooked up with a, a picture, a, of a real skanky chick in the break room at a, of a Kmart. Oh my god, this is bringing back some like memories. Sounds like Kmart was your Playboy mansion. I mean, yeah. you, you get fired for going to get some trim. You're you're tapping ass in the break room. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the king at Kmart right yeah. here. Yeah. yeah, but then after that, like I was a real uh, layabout fucking loser because like all the guy I, I was poor and all the kids that I saw who were like rich and like whatever. Where um, they were getting to do stuff like travel and like discover themselves. Mm -hmm. And like, I just didn't want to go to a job because most of the jobs aren't available or at night. I wanted to go like do stuff with myself or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I would work like day labor jobs. Like, you show up to an office, and like, if somebody has like a job for you to do for that day, they send you out like moving furniture, picking up trash. Like, one time I had to sort through metal or whatever, and then you come back and they pay you like that day. Mm-hmm. Oh, so yeah, you get like yeah, yeah. thirty-five bucks. Yep. It's like the Home Depot with so, people. So, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I've done like painting jobs like that where you, yeah. You just Before like, Task Rabbit, it was this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah you, you just meet a guy at a bar yeah. and you just be drinking with him. He's like, "Hey, you want to do some work tomorrow?" You're like, "Yeah, sure." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did, I did a, a drywall in that same capacity where it was just this guy I met like at an Applebee's or some shit. You know? <laughs> Were you ever good at any of those jobs? Because I was always. I just love the look you have to have, though, for a guy to comfortably say to you at an Applebee's, like, hey, buddy, uh, you want to do some drywall with me? (laughs) You really got to profile somebody. They're like, you're 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 drinking alone. Pounded some wings, like, hey, you look like you know your way around some drywall. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So, yeah, some of them I was, like, uh, kind of good at. I had various, like, manufactured jobs or whatever. But my head, I, as a, like a teenager in my or early twenties, was always in like getting the fuck out of Ohio. Okay, uh, and so, sure, yeah. so maybe your laziness is stifled due to your environment. Maybe you're kind not of, necessarily. Yeah, lazy. kind of a little bit. I mean, I had a bad upbringing in terms of like I didn't have like a father figure to uh, like until I was much older to like explain like work and integrity and yeah. stuff like that. You know, so I joined the military and oh. then I was in the Navy for five years. And then after I got out of the Navy, I went to work at the hotel and I started off as a fucking ten dollar an hour security guard. And then. By the end of my tenure there, I was like overseeing like a whole bunch of different departments. It's like when know? the waitress gets to be the booker. <laughs> you literally start. Uh, with, you're like, yeah, now yeah. you run this fucking place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're the only one that made it six months. Yeah, yeah. And the thing was, too, was like it's a it was a it's a beautiful hotel in a, in a beautiful little island and uh, outside of Charleston, South Carolina. And um, in Charleston, South Carolina, like the girl to guy ratio is like four to one. So oh. like out of the Navy and your mid 20s to go into a place like that was like getting out of prison. Oh, yeah. You know, and four to, to one Shangri-La. Yeah. And the thing that and it was a lot of fun to work there until I got into management, until I got into supervision, got on salary. And because uh, it's a right to work state and there was like this like. Gay competition among uh, all the middle management people, like who could put in the most hours. Uh, that's yeah, that's like worst. an American uh. thing too. We really pride ourselves on how overworked we are. It's, it's yeah, it, yeah, it's, yeah, so yeah. It's, it's like a braggart thing. Like, I, oh, I work fifty hour. Like, why? Right, absolutely. And well, that was the thing. It was like there were like no two days off in a row. If you get two days, ten hour work day, you know, at minimum. Usually the guys were there like six days a week or whatever and it's like you could just tell the class disparity between some of the people because some of them it didn't really affect them that much because they were brought up in that environment like one guy i worked with he went to like some hospitality school in sweden that's like private well that's what i was going to say if you are that's actually your career you want to run like a oversee a four seasons or a higher level hospitality thing that's I remember people like in the 2010s, that was like a career. You could make a lot of money, it but blows, the hours were terrible. It yeah. blows me away that people would go to college to, to be a manager at a restaurant because I worked in restaurants like the whole, and you would see like somebody would come in and these guys that started out as bus boys that are now like yeah. managers. And then there's some guy that comes in from Sweden yeah, and just <laughs> takes his job. Yeah, yeah. I think it's like the vice president of like operations for the Detroit Pistons started out 
as like a guy who sold concessions. It leads uh, to it, yeah, there's a something path. like that. Yeah, yeah. You, I mean, if you're a hard worker, like like the guy that one of the guys that I worked with, he was like a he was like a waiter in one of the restaurants, and now he's like the food and beverage director. Yeah, for the hotel, and they also. But here's the thing too: is like the 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 ownership of the hotel was owned they owned uh, a few different properties and things like that and their motto was to squeeze blood from a stone sure yeah and so if there was a guy who was went to swedish school and he was making 80 grand a year um and then wanted to go on to a different property they knew that the guy who started at the bottom who had only been making 30 grand a year getting 60 grand a year is going to be making it. oh yeah, he, yeah and sure. we're going to exploit the shit and that yep. was me yeah i yeah, was yeah. that guy what's well, a working class move you get us in a you give us like oh hey you're doing great but we're going to undercut you well yeah because we, we know you're going to be so happy to get the opportunity we've talked yeah. about this before it's like they're, they look at you like oh look at this lifer yeah he's a lifer yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. and so and there would be like employee incentive programs that like management would be excluded from because we're on salary salary it's yeah. ex- expectation and i'm just kind of i would like i would get so mad and like part of the reason i didn't get promoted towards the end of my tenure to a much higher position was because i was such a troublemaker about like mm-hmm. i don't think this is right i don't think how you treat these people are right and i think a right to work state i think a lot of people what they're really um, trained to be afraid of is to unionize yeah or uh, to go on some type of strike you know right because this this island is called Kiowa Island, and it is it's at least twenty minutes from the closest town, and to get like an a, a, a viable workforce, it's like forty five minutes to an hour to drive there, and people drive that m- amount of time in for an eleven dollar an hour job. Wow. So it you're costs spending you more money to go to work. <laughs> you're spending ten hours out of your day, um, at you know doing giving your life force away to this job for. I don't know, three hundred dollars a fucking week after yeah. taxes yeah. and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. And after a while it got to be so draining and I was just seeing people like take advantage of like I, I started just taking advantage of shit like all the time. Like free liquor. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, how would take you? it? Yeah. Yeah, I'll take all the food that I can find. Yeah. That's actually such a good feeling. When you it just is. when you reach that point, you're just like, Fuck it, I'm just gonna start stealing from yeah. this place. Like I'm just gonna <laughs> you know what <laughs> I mean? Wh- just, I mean fuck it. They owe me this. Yeah. That's when you get that yeah. they fucking owe me. Yep. That's that's the thing too is I had a a, a fellow employee of mine who we we had we had weathered through like the housing crisis, and I was on salary. So thank, that was the one time I was grateful to be on salary. Mm-hmm. But once you make it through that, and they know that they got you because there's nowhere else you can go. Mm-hmm. But like I have to reduce employee hours with like hourly people to like two days a week. And I'm sitting there telling these young people like, hey, you know, you're gonna be taking a huge pay cut. You can quit if you want to, because your other employees will be grateful for your hours. Yeah, you know and. It's like a. I'm just sitting there, meeting after meeting, just it's sliding a box shit of tissue. Sand- you just oh, shit sandwiches your feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had to do that. I had to do As that. Yeah. Management Dude. in your twenties. Yeah, bro. Yeah. yeah, and so, um, you know, and then we were like one of the only hotels and resorts that did not shut down during that time. In fact, we made a profit. We made the projected amount of revenue that we were expected to because we would just cut so many corners oh, and yeah. labor and stuff like that. Right. And they would rely on salary people to do the work and things like that. They still did that with the latest pandemic. They mm-hmm. like cut the whole staff down to like nine fucking people. Because for a whole hotel? For a whole ho- <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, people weren't really staying there at the time. Yeah, it was just like very sure. minimal, yeah. you know, and but they wanted to keep it open. And so uh, so these rich people are the retaining their <laughs> basically just, just yeah. people running around corners and shit like albinos. Yeah. Yeah, Derek's yeah. locked in a freezer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as I don't get stabbed in the chest with a shovel. Uh, but uh, the, yeah, so like uh, at that point, you know, it's like they have all these expectations for you and stuff like that, and you would just engage it. My my friend, he. Uh, you know, he didn't get his bonus, even though we hit our like revenue projections. Um, they, you know, over overworked him and stuff like that. So he started just kind of like he started just taking money. Yeah, so taking yeah. cash, like because he ran some certain cash operations. I'm gonna skim you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and yeah, yeah it's yeah. a felony, and I'm gonna go to prison for it. But at least I feel like I got one over on you. Here's the thing: is like he got is that a felony? 
Yeah, like they depends, the, amount, it depends it, on the, the amount, amount of money, money and, yeah. and what kind of transactions you were stealing. They didn't see that's just I'm like, right? dude, you should be allowed to steal from work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it should be like you should be like be able to tell this story and, and a judge would go, oh, OK, this sounds right. Yeah. Right, right. I mean, it is, uh, in my opinion, it's unethical for these already rich people to not realize that. The um, the people that are working for you are fucking suffering through this. It's the suffering that always gets me. It's like if you just give me a piece, man. I'm not yeah. asking to be you. Just right. like give me the piece. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was it too. Is that and so he actually he got caught. He had never spent any of the money. I think it was just like the way he explained it was that it was just like this psychological thing. He's like, I don't know why I started doing it. But he gave the money right back. They didn't prosecute him or anything like that. He lost his job. Um, How and much money are we talking about? Ten grand? No, not that high. It's a oh. couple, couple grand. Oh, okay. oh okay. Yeah, but it's it's enough. I yeah. mean, you could oh, yeah. you could get in trouble seriously for that sort of. Thought thing. it was Andy Dufresne in it. He just had a whole separate identities. Fucking <laughs> money <laughs> account. <laughs> no, going uh -uh. to Cabo. <laughs> the trip's planned in six months. Yeah, <laughs> they go into one of the rooms and there's a, just a hole dug out. Like, why did he dig a hole? There was an elevator right there. <laughs> It's completely unnecessary. <laughs> it, it, it's just that thing where it's like it, it dawns on you where you're like, I'm getting screwed over. And you're like, I don't fucking care anymore. Oh, yeah. yeah sort of thing. Well, and what can we do as like lower middle class? Like that's that's where I'm from, right? M lower middle class. What can you do? You go over it. Can I afford a lawyer that can make any dent in this giant corporation for mistreating me? No. You have no recourse. You have no resources. No. You got nothing. Uh, can I kill the GM? Sure, but like he's not the guy that's really making all the decisions. It's yeah. it's shit trickling down. You're not going to get to the guy no. who's actually making decisions to fuck you over. Oh, my GM was going through it too because yeah. he was like he was promoted to GM because they knew that this was like a dream for him to be the general manager of like a, a hotel like this, and he wasn't going to go anywhere. Yeah, and he was a good guy. He was a good guy. He was a good ethical guy, but I don't know that he necessarily like. Uh, valued himself in that regard. They right. really, they really started to pride themselves on like just doing what was told. Yeah. And so I came to them at one point in time. I was running like three different departments because these other salary people had quit. And I said, Hey, I I I done saved you 150 grand in salary. <laughs> yeah. Just give me five of it back. Yeah. Either you can allot it throughout the next 52 weeks. Uh, per year, you know, you know, or I'll take a lump sum. And they were like, yeah, you can just quit and we'll just find somebody else to do your job. Wow. Damn. Yeah. And I they don't care how the operation runs. It's already paint by numbers, right? They've made it so. Yeah. I mean, especially off a lot of things that I personally like did for the organization. Well, that's what I like, mean. They don't value any of that extra effort at yeah. all. Yeah. I also believe it's a mentality, too. If they feel if they give an inch. Then all of a sudden, word's gonna get out. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The handout. That's yeah. their whole mentality that they don't give an inch. Yeah, but and the thing is too is that they kept the hourly wages at the way they were because certain departments and whatnot they were like tipped employees, mm -hmm. and you could make a lot of money in season off tips or whatever. Yeah. But if you're like a salaried person. I'm not supposed to be keeping tips. That was like Whoa, one of the rules of right. whatever. When I started running the bell stand, uh, you know, the guys who take your luggage up and shit like that. If I hauled somebody's fucking suitcases up, yeah, fucking four I'm taking stairs, the money. I'm taking your fucking money. Hell you know yeah. What I mean? Yeah. Some of the, like I was paying out when I was doing payroll for that department specifically. I was paying guys out more than I was making and they're working less hours than me with less responsibility and they didn't have the expectation not fuck their coworkers. Yeah. And so <laughs> but I did for some reason. So I said, you know, I'm gonna start fucking my coworkers yeah. and you know, and that's what I did. Yeah, because there's hotel rooms everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my <laughs> my apartment's that's not that far away. That'd be a bad away. job for me, boy. That yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing too is when you when you are involved in a culture like that, you know, in in food and beverage or you know, hotels, hospitality, you guys all have your own shorthand. Oh yeah. You oh, know, yeah. and everybody hangs out and parties yeah. and oh, stuff. Yeah, so totally. we would all go to the same bars and stuff, you know, and hey, a couple beers in. It's hospitality like, women are always. Pretty put together too. There's always hot girls working oh, at hotels. Oh, for sure, yeah, yeah. Like hot ass resort yeah. waitresses. Oh dude. my god, oh my god. It's a, 
anything that's tourist too, it's like we need oh right. We need look value. We need yeah, to yeah, you yeah. know, you need to look like you fit the mold. I was sexually harassed by somebody from HR. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't always three hundred fucking pounds. Like I was I used to be in like pretty good shape. Oh right, because you're right out of the navy at the yeah, time. I was out yeah. of the navy, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I and then like when I was I was injured, then I got healed, and then I hired a personal trainer. I got back in shape, and I was, like, doing pretty good. And, um, you know, and, like, who am I going to tell? Also, it's so like... It's her like, sexually harassed? Like, what? Like, she's like just, like, cock. grabbing her ass? Uh, just what? feel me up every now and again, stuff like, <laughs> like that. Or, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, at, like, meetings. I didn't know if just, it was like, on one of these parties. Put her hand that. under the table, you know, like, on my leg or something like that. And, like, one time, my my... Uh, one of my good, my close friends, uh, she was the security director, and she looked across the table, and she saw like something was happening. She was like, when like like the days of blackberries were like real prominent. She's like, text me on the table, like what's going on? I was like, <laughs> just a tear uh, coming down. Your no, face. no, no. I was no, I was like pretty happy. Like, she's she, she's pretty hot, um, but I was like, I'm just um, just trying to make it through the day, you know. <laughs> so. She keeps giving me handies while I'm trying to do the agenda speech at the top of these yeah. staff meetings. She's trying to get through the day. Yeah. And and, uh, and 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 so it's just like the Wild West uh, in its own way, which was good and bad, you know, because like there was a lot of debauchery and shit like that. But at the same time, like you did want a professional environment so you could come, you could bring your complaints. Yeah to somebody so that you could get paid more yeah you yeah, know yeah, but yeah, if right. nobody's going to act in like a professional manner right yeah there's no leverage to be had right? yeah there's yeah, no yeah, business yeah. leverage yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. what kind of jobs have you had while doing stand-up uh i managed a, a a liquor store a wine store in the city in columbus circle oh okay Ooh. yeah yeah right across from the mandarin and yeah that, yeah uh, yeah i stayed there once the cnn Oh, you got money. <laughs> no, no, no. It was a gift from a rich person, but it was oh, oh, okay. it was unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, I believe it, yeah. Yeah, the yeah, man yeah. was incredible. Uh, yeah, right in Columbus Circle, right across from uh, the statue they're trying to take down. And um, uh, I did that for a long time, for a couple of years. I actually enjoyed that job a lot, even though we sold b- booze to homeless people. <laughs> it would be like, oh yeah, it would be some of the most famous and rich people in the world. Yeah, and then a guy who uses the New York Post to wipe his ass. <laughs> I just love New York. Store. I just love New York for that reason. Dude, like, oh, such dude, a dude, guy walks thing. in after the rich guy <laughs> to buy at the same place. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. I met like at that store. I met uh, Bill Bradley, uh, Denzel Washington, oh, Jeff wow. Gordon. Uh, oh God, Goldie Hawn. Oh, fucking wow. like. Uh, Derek Fisher, Phil Jackson, because everyone stays all there. these fucking per se's there. Uh, I mean, everything yeah, 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 yeah. on the, the circle. Paul McCartney, Tony Bennett, yeah. oh, shit. Jackie Mason used to have coffee next door at the. Paul McCartney's coming in buying his own booze. No, he would just be in the area. Gotcha. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, you yeah. could see that whole little circle there. Yeah. When you're down there. It's like Denzel really came miss. in with his with his uh, with his bodyguard. With his bodyguard, he has got it. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I I would if I were Denzel Washington. You know, I don't think Springsteen ass. when he goes out on his own. Like in his real life, I don't think he takes his body. I think he just wears a hat. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah. He, he, Adam Sandler does. Too. Adam Sandler was. Put, I think that by. hat really is magical. Like I've heard, it's like <laughs> no one recognizes, it, especially <laughs> yeah. in New York, when you yeah. got that that hat down. No one. Yeah, right. yeah. Unless I, you're a fucking basketball player or a football yeah, player. Yeah, like unless you're really tall. You don't right, stick yeah, yeah, out. Yeah, exactly, right. You, you have something like, some like very distinctive or like you're a big fan of. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. I saw a guy, a, a fucking character actor. Walking outside a New York comedy club, the East Fourth one, uh-huh. and I was just like, and he had hat on, sunglasses, and I was like, "Hey, I know you," <laughs> you know, just a random character actor or whatever, because I'm like a fan of like random bullshit like yeah, that or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I actually like that job because you got to interact with the breadth of you New York, New yeah, York you yeah, know, the the, the lowest sure. of the low, the highest of the high. Some of the homeless people were some of the funniest people, man. This guy. He come in. He come in one minute, buy something. You know, we tell him, "All right, you're cut off for the day." So we come back in in a wig, try to, <laughs> try to pretend he was somebody different. What kind of wig? Like a mullet or like a? It was a black guy with like a Shirley Temple wig on, <laughs> like like a long like red, like red hair with same Shirley clothes Temple and black. everything, just like. And he like, <laughs> we like, like Mike. He, Mike, you gotta go, man. He's like, come on. <laughs> 
Like why go to There's like a million uh, liquor stores <laughs> Right I just love that he He has a stash Of fucking costume <laughs> Dude, you know he's <laughs> gonna come in handy <laughs> He comes across the wig You know he used to come in there Was Pat Cooper The comedian Oh yeah Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pat Cooper who I um I listened to the The Soprano Talking Sopranos podcast yeah. Did you listen to that uh, I didn't know since you guys do God's tattoo. I, I, I list episodes, yes. Okay. Not the Pat Cooper one. I Steve Sharippa like really hated that guy. I didn't know that. Oh, he was yeah. a cunt. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, I he heard. was a cunt. He, he was, was very Cooper. funny he to me. Oh, yeah. yeah. He was very nice to me, but he would be... Because Sharippa used to book. He's, yeah, he, he used, used to book, book in Vegas. And yeah. Pat Cooper's oh, the worst that. with the booker. He's like... Yeah, I guess he uh, ran around Vegas money. talking shit about everybody, including Frank Sinatra. Oh, yeah. That's why no one... Asked him I, to do shit. I would hear him on the Stern, Stern show. had beef yeah, with yeah, him. Like yep. He always his son always hated beef. him. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was funny though to watch Pat Cooper on Tough Crowd, and that was like the only guy that Patrice would laugh at because oh. he shreds. He because oh, he yeah, was he, fucking vicious, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he was dude. incredible. One time he got asked by these black guys outside for some money or whatever, you know, and he handed him some money, and then uh, they walked into the liquor store before he did, and he came and he goes, "What the fuck?" He goes, "I thought I was giving you baboons some money for food." <laughs> He's like, "You're in here buying fucking liquor." <laughs> And I thought these black guys were gonna fuck him he's, up or whatever. He's fearless, dude. He was oh, and fearless. he just he just ripped into him, made fun of him or whatever. And after a minute, they were laughing with him. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, he would go nuts inside of that store, and people would just stop and be like, "What is this guy doing?" <laughs> right. You know? Well, I think people really misunderstand. You know, this is kind of on topic for the show. I'm glad you brought it up. Understand, like when you are working class, you are with all the different cultures. I mean, I'm not saying that Pat Cooper of all people went to a school with black guys. I'm just saying the reality is if you don't live around the people I live around, how can you tell me how to talk to the people in my neighborhood, right? Yeah, right. Like, it's just a, a... I don't know. It's just the way you speak to people. I'm not saying that you should be going around calling people baboons. Right, of course. But in the, at the end of the day, he knows... This is, I've been doing this for years. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say this shit. I'm gonna say. I don't know. It's, it, I, yeah, it's I, I love it. Because I honestly... I, I don't really have problems. Like, I grew up in like the you know suburbs of philly like with just like you know cars on the front lawn and stuff like that you yeah know, just like trashy kind of and yeah and i cars on blocks yeah, yeah all yeah. that stuff yeah, yeah yeah and i never really had problems like in any like just because people I, I feel like just people can kind of sense it on me like oh yeah, yeah you're kind of trashy too yeah. like yeah it's fine i'm not above you or beneath you yeah, we're just yeah. like yeah, I, I talk know, to man. everybody the same. Yeah. yeah. You know, like very, I mean, like if it's a business situation sure. and we're in a professional environment. I say sure. dude. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll yeah. come to an interview and say, what's up, dude? You yeah. Know what I mean? but, I'll call yeah. you sir, I guess. Like for my, for my, yeah, for certain of these jobs. But for the most part, I don't give a shit who you are. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we're same. all people, yep. you know, more than likely, especially too, as you, you grow and you find out a lot of people who you assumed were like just hardworking and that's how they got there. It's like, well, they knew somebody. Right. Or somebody knew Dude, them. 99% of them so much. Yeah. got handed a fucking ticket to ride. Yeah. I mean, and most, then act like they worked really hard. A lot that, of it. I mean, we've talked about this just in comedy a lot. Like, sometimes you just get lucky. You know yeah. what I mean? A lot of people just get lucky. You're at the right place, right time. I mean, it, I've gotten lucky on uh, jobs Not, just in my life. Getting like, lucky to guys like you and I are like, oh, man, someone saw my set and offered me a spot. Getting lucky when you got connections is someone saw me and got me in at SNL. Yeah. Like, you, you literally can move the needle yeah, with certain true. connections. So it's different levels of luck. You need, opportunity yeah. is opportunity. There is, a, is, you know, SNL specifically, I guess, like in the writer's room. Um, I yeah, I've met some people who work in there or whatever. Or, and like there's like legacy hires for oh, of that. course oh. like there's College. like yeah yeah or like or Interesting. not even just that. that like his dad worked here before yeah so now he's a comedy writer so now he's gonna work here oh, wow. and i'm sure that person's funny you know what i mean but it's like if you have two resumes and they both look kind of the same you're gonna go with who you know yeah oh yeah true and i don't fault people for yeah. that honestly but like i'm not gonna treat you like you're better than the guy who didn't get exactly the job. yeah and yeah. some people want to be treated like they're better. They they project that. I mean, yeah. maybe that's insecurity because they got something with no work. I mean, maybe that's what happens. Sometimes people act like that solely because. Yeah, or you know what I mean. You just get this. You you know your this confidence that just gets uh, instilled in you, right? Like you're just like, yeah, I'm doing it. Until you take that fucking face shot. <laughs> I live for these fuckers when they get that face shot to watch them piss and moan and cry. 
Oh man, I love watching people eat gravel. <laughs> After all the gravel I've eaten and the fuck, oh, this being is Josh. dragged. I don't, I don't know if you've ever seen this side of Josh. Holy Josh, shit. we talk about sometimes. He's like, yeah, dude, what would you do? You know how you fucking Megan? And Josh is like. I would watch my enemies burn. Oh, dude, if I was a billionaire, yeah. the vengeance. If I was a billionaire, everyone in comedy never fucked me over. I, I, I keep them in court. I keep them up I, I, until they fucking kill themselves over the, the, the fees for the lawyer. Bury their business, watch their That's family fine, cry over That's their fucking fine. business. You make me... <laughs> I digress. I I used to I used to be very much like that. To be honest with you, I used to be very classy. And I'm doing really well, and I'm really bitter. <laughs> that's, the, that's the fucking brand now. Around 43, and I'm bitter. That's the brand. Yeah. Uh, have you? What's the biggest comedy moment you've ever had, and then had to go to a day job the next morning? And what was that day job? Oh man, um, I think this past Tuesday. Uh. <laughs> uh no um well I, yeah it's this podcast yeah, so yeah. Head back to work. <laughs> yeah yeah um oh you know what you know you know it was recently i was uh featured for a buddy of mine and we did uh uh three three or four sold out shows at like a funny bone you oh, yeah. know and he's got a big following and whatnot and then, um, you know, I flew out on Sunday, and then the next day I had to log into my job. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and, and we have a meeting on Mondays, and, and they're like, what was your, like, one great thing or whatever, you know? And I was like, oh, I just did, like, four sold-out shows, you know? And they're like, cool, don't forget to file your TPS yeah, report. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't forget to submit your hours, you know? You're kind of like... Yeah, this this does suck. It's yeah. the closest thing to being kicked in the nuts without uh, actually being kicked in the nuts. Yeah, I mean, it really yeah. is the same yeah. kind of defeated feeling in <laughs> yeah. a way. Yeah, I said, and, and that night I had to do um, uh, a comedy club in Brooklyn, uh, and I I uh, sent him a picture. It was uh, the guy who was hosting on stage, and there were two audience members, one on the far left side of the room and one on the far right. <laughs> And all these seats, like, in between. And I was like, welcome back to New York, baby. <laughs> um, the, it's, it's you know, uh, I feel like we all have gotten, like, to, we all have these really great high highs yeah. in comedy where, you know, um, I, I had a general meeting with a, with a media company, and it, it they really liked me a lot or whatever, and I fucked it up because... They were they they wanted me to do so it was it was a meeting they they said do you have I'm any fucking it's like a K Kmart callback <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah yeah so I banged one of the <laughs> yeah <laughs> no they 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 wanted me to pitch them on like a TV show or whatever and so my and I was working at the liquor store at the time and my idea was I was like I was like well I just want to go around and do like kind of a, this is like ten years ago now like a man on the street thing. Where I go into different neighborhoods in Brooklyn and I, you know, interview people who are like of different cultures and stuff like that. Cause especially when like culture identity was really ramping up in sure. comedy yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah. that, you know, and it's like, yeah. and I had a podcast that was already kind of built around that at the time. And so they're like, oh, that's a really, f you know, smart, interesting concept, you know. But what we were thinking was that we would put you in a haunted house. <laughs> <laughs> um, and follow you around with night vision cameras and watch you get scared or whatever. And I'm like, I don't know. That's not really that dignified. I'm going to go back to working at the liquor store. <laughs> and, and I was sitting there thinking about it. I was like, I'm so fucking stupid. <laughs> All this integrity. Yeah. I right was now like, I take a job fucking letting a guy slap me in the head with one of the Jersey Shore people hit me in the head with a dildo. Right. Exactly. I do it right now. <laughs> Am I going to sell 30 more tickets a weekend? Fuck it. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, Literally the next day, I'm like handing the guy with the wig like a <laughs> bottle of vodka. You yeah, know, I'm like, what am I doing? I should just started with the wig that morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, Mike, is that a blonde wig? Where'd yeah. you get that? Looking good. He started with the wig so that when he took it off, he'd be a different person. Yeah. When he came back in, like, it's the reverse. There was a guy who used to come in um, to that store. He, his nickname was Magic because he would make shit disappear. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Nice. And he was and he was walked in a cane with a, like a walker, old old guy. And was he, it a work or was he actually in need of the? He walker? actually was. He oh, actually okay. did need the walk. I mean, he would get so he was basically homeless, so pit, so drunk he would literally piss his fucking pants, mm -hmm. like fall asleep, pissing out front, 
And one time, and he was mean too. Oh, okay. It wasn't just this thing where it was like an old sweet man. No, he's we had like a couple of old homeless guys who you felt really bad for, and they just wanted to drink to get themselves through the night. Yeah. You know, this guy was fucking mean. And one time, before I was like getting the store ready to open up, it's eight in the morning, and he just walks up to the door, knocks on the door. And then just whips his dick out and starts pissing on the glass and all over the front of it, you know, or whatever. And I had just like had enough of it. And I, I fucking kicked open the door and I took his walker and I threw it into fucking traffic. And, and, and I, and I know like, you could have been in a haunted house. I know. I, yeah, exactly. And the thing is too, is like, I pitched like, (laughs) steady. And, and on its surface, like too, circle. because of how it looks of, like, this big white guy <laughs> is throwing this old black man's walker into traffic. Like, there's a lady who was walking. She was by herself. She goes, hey, don't do that or Shut whatever. Up. You don't know what happened. And I go, and that's exactly. I go, I, I go, ma'am, you have no fucking clue what you're talking about. And she went up to, to him and, and uh, she started trying to talk to him about what happened. And within 30 seconds, she was like, oh, this guy deserved it. Because <laughs> he was swearing at her like, bitch, I'll fuck you up. Shut yeah. the fuck up. Sort yeah, of mind shit. your like, business. <laughs> yeah, just mind your fucking business. I just business. love the, the, the vision. Like, I'm envisioning Derek with the fucking fucking like javelin like just like a what do they call that shit the shot the, the shot, shot put. It. oh yeah he's like doing more of the the hammer throw with this fucking walker oh yeah absolutely that's what it was it was that yeah yeah i had the cadence and everything tennis balls flying off it i threw it and i put my hand up like this to like he made that like sound that those russian dudes made yeah <laughs> yeah can we get a ruling from the ioc on how far how far it made it. That might have been a record for Walker throwing. That is the best visual ever. Yeah. Uh, and and I feel like us as comics, we probably have a lot of these moments where we're like we experience like a real I yeah, you know, I killed it on this show and like this really oh, great yeah. comic oh. saw me crush it yeah. and then the next day I'm back at the food processing <laughs> oh, yeah. planner. Yeah. Oh. Or delivering Grubhub or whatever it is that you know yeah. you, you, we got to do for this bullshit. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a common topic on this uh, on this show. The sad. What's the best was? Uh, who is it? Sarah was on. And she, she did the Tonight well, Show. A lot of people have TV and have to go back to like, <laughs> like a storage Walking job. Yeah. Or some shit. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, at least it wasn't your headline shows you sold out of Funny Bone and had to go back to your day. Oh job. yeah. If I I'm mean, so, that's yeah. one thing. Like, and I don't think we're too far off of that. Where you could actually have, uh, I don't know. I guess there is money to be made via social media, but I think you can he- like headline a lot of places and still not be able to make enough money to live here. Oh. It depends. I mean, it, well, that's the yeah. thing. It's expensive to live here too. Yeah. So that's the other thing, right? Yeah, it depends on your situation. Like I, I'm at the point where, I mean, if I'm, you know, certain weekends I do better than others. But if I'm, you know, f- selling out four shows, yeah, you're making it. Then I'm, shows that then, a funny then, I'm, then I'm okay. 100 yeah, grand yeah, a year yeah, at least. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, not, but not, four shows as the feature, no. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, no. but yeah, but um, yeah, uh, you know, you talk about Sarah Talamash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah like um, those sort of moments, you know. And I think like some people, if they're in the middle of, uh, you know, Buttfuck Colorado and they do the Tonight Show and then they're doing $1,200 weekends. That's probably their expenses for the month. Oh, yeah. Right. You oh, know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And then the other Texas. three weekends are, yeah. 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 Deep, deeper Texas, not necessarily Austin, but, you know, Texas. Yeah. yeah, that's why, yeah, that's why a lot of people move to that region yeah. Yeah. and whatnot. And did you guys, were you, you guys never, you have a family, you guys have families and wives and stuff like that. You never considered moving to like Austin during the pandemic or anything, right? Well, I, no, see, my, I my job is a office gig. Yeah. And it's really in a good spot. I'm definitely like a administrator through there. I do some stuff that's kind of related to entertainment, but overall uh the job is super stable. So I got really lucky. I didn't have to even consider moving. Yeah. Um but I am now considering you know figuring out where to move next. Having a kid, having a wife, you want space. I mean, I have a great place here. I'm not mad at it. I'm really lucky. I'm going to ride it out. Yeah. But ultimately, one day, you you know, I want my kid to have a bike. Right. And and yeah. New York, is a, ch- an, a in my opinion, is an adult choice unless my business here was s- making so much money that we had to live here. You know, like as a kid, 
I wouldn't have wanted to be a middle class kid living in New York City. There was just no way I'd be able to do the things that I got to do as a kid, sports wise, uh, I accessibility. I, I just, know, man. I don't know, the man. Suburbs. I don't know that I would ever live in the suburbs, raise a kid in the suburbs. I just so many like just derelicts dirt bags like i just like when i talk about like when i was a kid i just looked up to the dirt bags in my neighborhood you know what i mean and it just influenced my whole trajectory because i've always just sought those people out in my life well what about you, you have a wife Derek? do you, you want to move at some point or oh, yeah. move elsewhere yeah yeah uh, i mean uh, we... but do you want to be let me ask this for answer, answer the question let me ask you this do you see yourself would if you knew like tomorrow you could make x amount of dollars you can't make i could make th- 40 grand right now at stand up if I really pushed it. If I quit everything, I know I could probably put together 40 grand in a year doing mm-hmm. stand up. Yeah. And if you'd have told me that 10 years ago, I would say, God damn, that's pretty good. Way to go. That's awesome. Now it's like, yeah, no, like, it's work. You can't live. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. if I live, like you said, in Colorado, if I wanted to move my whole operation somewhere and I knew I could get the tour dates done. Yeah. But that's also a different way of life now, right? Yeah. It's right, a, it's right. It's a ball yeah. game of comedy. For sure. If I, I, the money I make from stand-up, I could afford how I was living when I was 19. Yes, it's right. a teenage um, salary. It really yeah, is. yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, in I, it, when I was 19, I had a studio apartment in Toledo, Ohio. And what was so, that, like 500 bucks a month? 315. <laughs> oh, and wow. so, yeah. Wow. Um, and so, like, in that regard, for sure. And if I had consistent weekends and, like, and... Yeah, I, thankfully I get booked enough around here. But if I had enough consistent weekends on the road, I would consider it. But it's not that I want to leave New York. I I don't have any kids. I love New York. New York is becoming uh, extraordinarily unaffordable yes. for working yeah. class and middle class people. Yes. Yeah. I was just having a debate about this yesterday on fucking threads of all things about the new congestion tax, dude. Oh. That's brutal. You drive right? Yeah, yeah. dude. You, it's you got a car? No, me, I man. don't. But like, now yeah. I'm definitely not going to get one. I, right, mean, I was right. planning on it. Because you're up in Washington, right? You're, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And so, um, I, I'm over in Sunnyside, and and not even just like, I, you know, some nights I, if I'm if I know I'm not going to get home till two, three in the morning. I might want to drive in yeah. because I don't want to be on the train that late, or yeah. if the train's running. Exactly. I and, was at Eastville, mm-hmm. uh, getting there from here, forty minutes, not bad. The minute it hits 11, 11 p.m., yeah. it becomes an hour and fifteen minute. Oh, because it goes easily. fucking crawl local, local yeah, and that. then it's like every nut job that didn't get on the train the last hour and a half, people getting off their shifts at bars. It's Thursday night. Yep. all that shit yeah. gets on the train. It's hell. Yeah, it's yeah. hell. Yeah, and rather than like fix the fucking subway with all the money that's been allocated to them for years, they think the solution is is to start charging plumbers and uh, carpenters and contractors who are driving in from Staten Island, Long Island, more money to yeah. do their job to service the fucking city. Yeah, dude, they've been gutting those. Uh, all of the stations have lost uh, people out front, so there's just heroin addicts just hanging out in the yeah. steps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah. like 181st Street is just dope fiends. Yeah, and it's like they're harmless, but at the same time, That's it's it. like, what? Why am I paying more money for this? Yeah, it's unsafe. Yeah. It is unsafe. Yeah, yeah, and also, you know, with my wife, it's like if she's at like uh, some kind of function or something like that, you know, late at night, I don't want her. No, yeah. she's taking an Uber. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. and and yes, yeah, so or or I'll go pick her up. Yeah, you know, I have a friend who's coming in in the first weekend of June, and you know, she's got a wedding in the city. She doesn't. She's gonna be by herself. I don't want her taking the subway. No, yeah. you know it's not safe for. And this isn't some Republican bullshit. There are a lot of women comics who I talk to who are like, I don't feel safe. No, riding the train late yeah. at night, so I don't want to fucking do it. People are and more I, brazen than ever out there. Yeah, and the crazy is crazier than it, than I've ever. I've been here eighteen years. It's the crazier well, I, it's ever been. Crazy. I think it was the pandemic pushed people. There's like more homeless now, right? There's yeah. more like so. Uh, my opinion. Those on fringe it, fuckers they got eliminated from many of those programs. Like, right? Yeah. So Schizos that, that won't so, take their meds. All that. Yeah. So like it pushed. Uh, it pushed like the the daywalkers. Yeah. You know, like it pushed the uh the crazies out like into the daytime. Yeah. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, like, yeah. 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 There's a little bit of a flood, so it's like and next thing you know, you like dude, people this getting cold cock for no reason. Dude's fucking wild. Yeah. yeah. Steve Buscemi getting hit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Rick Moranis. Rick Moranis. Yeah. And then those Rick women Moranis getting knocked punched? out. Rick Moranis got punched like a year last year. Like oh, knocked the fuck out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fuck. And then uh you know and then you have this influx of all these new people who are coming from. 
you know, God knows wherever yeah. who are like who are openly saying, you know, fuck America, fuck New York, fuck whatever. And they're just coming here to wreck shit. And it's like, what are we doing? Yeah. What are we do? And like you, if you can't realize that no matter what your political spectrum is, that this is a problem, you are part of yes. that problem. Yeah, right. Yes. And it's always these people, these bureaucrats who live in, you know, Albany or wherever else or in the suburbs mm-hmm. going rules for thee not rules for me yeah 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 you yeah. Know? and that's where it's become gross like when i first started coming to new york city in the late 90s everything felt so much more egalitarian mm-hmm. and then now it's like the wealth disparity is so huge yes yeah, yeah, yeah. they're letting um you know saudis and chinese people buy up all this real estate and let it sit empty so that it's basically tax shelters in Manhattan mm-hmm. instead of having like housing that's available for people who want to live and work here. Right. And I'm not an idealist, but it's common sense and why it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, not idealism if it, you make complete sense. Why? Why is that such an issue? There's a ceiling yeah. to it. Like yes. it's gonna, uh, it's gonna crash. Like it's, it's a, you know, it's another kind of bubble thing yeah. where if yeah. you don't have a sustainable workforce, being able to the congestion pricing is just insane. Like I'm just, yeah, yeah. I say this, if you're going to do congestion pricing, you should be able to fuck as many women as you want in Kmart. Anyone that Derek wants to fuck in Kmart, you should be able to do. Was she worth getting fired, that girl that you were chasing? If she's out there now listening, was she worth? Do you still, do you know where she is? Uh, you know, I should look her up. <laughs> she's probably not a fan of mine. I'll say that, so who knows. Derek, plug yeah. where you're at so everyone can find what you're doing. Oh, uh, you guys can f- just follow me on, on any social media imaginable um, at Hump Derek H U M P D E R E K DerekHumphrey.com. Um, I'm on the road this summer, so come see me. Awesome, uh, yes. Josh Accardo at Josh Accardo at Josh uh, Working class holes comedy tour. We just ended our dates in Houston. More dates coming up uh, throughout the summer. Go ahead, Ed. Uh, follow me at Ed McGowan Comedy on Instagram. Go to EdMcGowan.com. Email us. If you ever fucked anybody at a Kmart, yeah, email us. <laughs> send us your stories. <laughs> WorkingClassComedians at gmail.com. We'll see you guys again next week. You can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every Wednesday. You can follow us on Instagram at WorkingClassHoles. Also, make sure you watch the full show on YouTube. All you got to do is type in WorkingClassHoles. And please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend. Come on.